welcome back to Advanced Animation Application, where today we're going to be looking at what an animation state machine is. So the first thing to kind of cover is what is a state machine? Well, if we go to our Anim Blueprint and we go over here, to the very start of my Anim Blueprint, you'll see I have a locomotion state machine. Now, the way you get one of these is you type in state machine, add new state machine. And then it just has an output here and that can go into anything at all. You could put a state machine into a blend by bool. You could put a state machine into a layered blend per bone. You could put it straight into the output. You could do whatever you wanted to do with it. You could use it for like an additive animation state machine. So if we dive into my locomotion state machine, you can see it has a very, very simple setup. It has the entry point here. We have walk and run here. We have jumping here. We have falling here. And we have combat over here. Now, if we go into my walk and run state, you can see I have my unarmed locomotion blend space. And this is just a blend space, you know, walking to running to sprinting and whatever. And it's got all of the sideways ones as well. And so what this means is whenever this is the active state, it's going to be using whatever's inside it. I should also mention you can do blends inside a state machine state. So, you know, we could do blend poses by bool. Um, if, if, you know, injured is true, then play a different blend space. Blah, blah, blah. And I would recommend doing it this way rather than you know if you are in your anim graph rather than having a locomotion and then another one called locomotion injured or something and blending out here i'd recommend doing it as deep into the state machine as you can go and the reason i say that is that if you wanted to make a change to this like you wanted to change one of the transition rules or you wanted to add another state or something then you would have to do that to every single state that you have set up. So I'd recommend doing variations like that inside the state machine states. Um, you can also do things like expose the blend space, like the, the asset that it's using. We can expose that as a pin. So we can actually now, you know, promote this to a variable. And this can be called current walking blend space or something. And then whenever we, you know, equip a new weapon or something, we can just ask the weapon, hey, you know, what, what walking blend space or what running blend space should I be using? And it can update it in the anim graph. And so that would be, you know, a super easy way. We can just make it very modular by using a, a, a reference pin to the asset. So how do we actually switch states in a state machine? So you can see here, I've got the walking and running. I've got jumping here and I have falling here. So the way we actually transition between these is using these transition rules. Now these transition rules are always a Boolean. And so what happens is that the current state is always looking at all of the outgoing states and just checking, is this transition rule true? Is it true now? Is it true now? Is it true now? Until it is and then it will switch to the next state. So the transition rule for us to go from walking to jumping is, was jumping. Now you can see here that this doesn't have a fast path icon on it. Uh, so if we go to our event graph, you can see that on blueprint initialize animation, I am getting the pawn owner and then I'm casting it to living being because that's what all of our moving, you know, characters and stuff are. And then I'm setting that as a variable. So you will need to, you know, get a reference to whatever character is using this, this anim blueprint. And then what we can actually do is use property access. And we can go to the living bean. And we can actually look for that variable was jumping, which is in the character movement component. Here it is, was jumping. And we can actually bind directly to that variable. So now you can see this actually has a fast path icon rather than 
getting the variable from a reference to the living being, which has to go through, you know, blueprint, layer, something, something. Uh, we can just bind directly to that variable. And basically, when you see this icon, it means, good job, this is as optimal as it can get. So then what we're going to do is after our jump animation, we want to go to falling when the relevant anim time remaining is less than 0.2 seconds. And if we actually look here, you can see that I have a blend time of 0.2 seconds. And the transition rule for falling to walking or standing or running or whatever, the Boolean is in the default character movement component uh, is moving on ground. So wherever that is, where's the dam is moving on ground? Is flying is... Ah, oh, it's... It's right here. Is moving on ground. Bam. Fast path enabled. Good job. So what's going to happen now is if I hit play, I'm walking and running. So my character capsule is moving around. It's sending the movement speed and direction data to the Anim BP, which is saying, okay, you know, we want to play this animation. Uh, these are the values that go into it. And if I jump, let me slow down time. If I jump, it's going to go to my jump animation and then it's immediately going to go to my falling animation. Very cool. Now, keep in mind that we can enter falling via walking and running. You know, if we just fall off a cliff, we didn't jump, we just started falling. So you do have to come up with rules for that. This one is just get movement component is falling. And if we were to, you know, put our character up here, you can see that we're in our walking, running state, idle state, whatever it is. And if we just fall off, we enter our falling uh, animation. Now, a few things to note about anim state machines. Uh, you can get notified when a transition occurs. So if I click on this walk to run transition here, or you can actually do this as well on the state, uh, you know, entered state event or something. I can actually say, okay, when this occurs, I want an event called test jumping notify to occur. And I can actually recall that in the event graph of the, you know, the anim blueprint. So if we go uh, test jump, here we go, event anim notify, test jumping notify, print string, uh, jump, 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 jump. So whenever we enter that transition from walking to jumping, that will occur. So ready, and then boop, it says jump, 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 cool. And the other thing you really need to pay attention to when you're using these states and stuff is the duration of the crossfade. So if I go from walking, running to jumping, if this was, if this had a duration of zero, then you would see that it's like, it's really kind of jerky. Um, so if I like do that, see that that jump animation was just super, super choppy. Um, Again, it depends on the style of the game and, and your personal style, but, you know, if I jump now, that looks a bit, um, a bit whack. And so whenever you're, you know, making animations or putting animations and stuff together, um, you should use the blends to your advantage because that's kind of how you get really smooth transitions between everything. So you can choose the, the mode, you know, is it a linear or a cubic? Um, the duration of it. So, you know, just experiment with what a long transition looks like or a short transition. Um, I use this to my advantage with the jumping animations. If I just fall down here real quick. Uh, with the falling animations, if I just slow time down real quick, you can see that because I'm seeing which foot is forward when the jump starts, um, the blend between the running and the jump actually acts as that foot going backwards, you know? So, foot's forward, we jump, and it, and it snaps backwards over 0.3 seconds. And so that's kind of a way that you can use the blend time as an animation in itself, if that makes sense. 
So that was just a quick look at animation state machines. I would recommend trying to keep them as simple as possible and utilizing the fact that you can actually put extra, you know, blends and stuff inside the states. Um, that can be really handy so that you don't end up with, you know, a million different states with a million different transition rules rather than have another state for, you know, walking and running injured and then walking and running tired or something. And then we would have to, you know, do transitions between this and then also transitions between that and jumping and also falling uh, and also going into the, the combat stance and stuff. And we have to do that for every single state, which becomes an absolute fucking nightmare. You know, we'd have to like transition between these both ways. And then you've got to set up transition rules for all of them. Completely nightmarish. The better way to do it is just to do the either a blend by Enum or Bool or whatever in the state itself or use a, a blend space, you know, anim asset reference that you can set, you know, when you equip a new weapon or you enter a specific state or something like that. So I hope this video was, you know, educational and or entertaining. I hope you learned at least, you know, one new trick. And if you have any questions about the anim state machine, uh, please leave a comment or just ask on Discord, uh, which is linked below. We have a very friendly, helpful Discord that's full of nice people. If you do ever want to ask questions live on stream, uh, make sure that you're following my Twitch account, which is also linked below. I do stream most days of the week, uh, you know, answering questions and working on Prismatic of the game. And it's always, always a good time. We're always exploring new concepts and, and new things and coming up with stupid ideas and whatnot. So make sure you stay tuned for that. And lastly but not leastly, if you do want to support these tutorials and the development of Prismatic of the Game, you can do so for as little as $1 per month in the Patreon, which is linked in the Schmeebly doobly -ga. So, I guess with that I say goodbye. Goodbye.